Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, in recent news, I'm sure you guys have heard that there was a there was a home in uh, Paris, California that held 13 kids captive. Uh, it was two parents, and they held, I mean, 13 kids. They're, they're kids. 13. Um, they held them captive for several years in their home uh, without anyone ever knowing. Um, and, and one thing that I don't understand is the neighbors, you know, in the news report that I'll, that I'll add into this um, video here, um, they said that, you know, you never know who your neighbors are. It's actually heartbreaking for the staff and uh, uh, you just, it's unbelievable what you see. The police officer was talking to her and she just kept like smirking at him. Crazy, you never know who your neighbors are. And it's surprising how true that actually is. You know, you never know who your neighbors actually really are. Um, <clears throat> and one thing I really want to uh, bring home on this video is um, I myself am going to be going to EMT school here in April. Um, I myself am not an EMT or a first responder yet, um, but I will be going to school to be a first responder here pretty soon. Hopefully, um, you know, when I graduate, I'm almost done. Uh, I will be, you know, applying for a job as a dispatcher in EMD, emergency medical dispatcher, while I go to uh, EMT school. All that aside, uh, what I really want to bring home on this video is the the horrors of being a first responder. Uh, what you know, things that you're going to be getting yourself into. Like I said, I am not a first responder yet. I'm going to school here in a couple months for that. But uh, you know, you have to know what you're getting yourself into. You know, I'm uh, I know what I'm getting myself into. Um, especially as an EMT, you're going to see all kinds of terrible things. I have a couple stories uh, here. Um, to kind of shed some light on that as well, but you know 13 kids captive in their home That's just kind of unbelievable, you know imagine, you know the police officers that responded, you know the, the um, I'm sure there's EMTs who responded to maybe some fire. I don't know I can't even imagine the horror that they were going through while investigating that while searching the home looking for clues and evidence for you know the court trial and from what I hear you know they were they were bound to chains to furniture and stuff like that and uh, they were malnourished uh, the 17 year old who called 911 uh, she got a hold of a cell phone somehow and attempt you know managed to get out of a window and uh, to call 911 and it's just heartbreaking you know being a first responder and going through stuff like that, I'm sure is so hard. I just, I can't, I can't comprehend how do you get away with that? How do you get away with that for so many years? And one of their kids was what, I think they said 29 years old, but he didn't look old at all because he was malnourished. And I just, I don't understand, you know, how you can get away with that. That's just an, an example. That's a pure example of one thing that first responders go through. That's things that they have to deal with, things that they have to take home with them. You know, when they take their uniforms off at the end of the day, it's supposed to resemble, you know, taking your uniform off and, and leaving everything at work. But really, I mean, I can already see that coming now. It's, it's going to be hard for me in the future to do that. Uh, you know, just you can't just take your uniform off and just leave it all at work. I mean, anyone who's been in it for a long time, I'm sure will say, oh, it's nothing. You know, um, I'm not speaking for everyone, but I'm sure that there's some that are so used to things, especially, you know, uh, in suburban areas, you know, in cities and stuff like that, who deal with things every day like that, you know, um, and they're so used to it, they just go home and live normal lives, and I'm sure that, you know, you can do that, but at the same time, um, someone who's a new first responder, like I will be, seeing something like that, it's it's hard not to take that home with you, and I'm, I'm sure that you you think about it, you know, it's in your mind all the time. I mean, me, I'm not even a first responder yet, and it still bothers me to know that things like that go on. Um, here in the United States, I, I mean, it happens everywhere, but man, here in the United States, it's, it's, it's crazy that, you know, that can actually happen, you know, to people, and, and people can actually have the heart to do that. Um, and like I said, you know, being a first responder, that's really, really, really what I want to drive home on this video is the things that first responders go through, the things that they have to take home with them, the things that are always on their mind after work, you know, and during work. It's insane. I, I just can't believe something like that could actually happen to anybody. Um, I know there's been crazy things that have happened in, in the past too, you know, like Columbine and, and Jeffrey Dahmer, the things that he's done. 
Uh, and I just, what would be going through my mind uh, as a first responder, going and seeing those kind of things is, it, it would just be so hard, um, it, it would stick with me. You know, it, it would affect me and emotionally, mentally, and it would just really, you know, they see the worst side of the world. They see all the bad things that happen and they are the ones who deal with those things. And um, like I said, it's it would just be so hard not to, uh, for that not to stick with you. It, it would just be really hard. Here recently, my uh, grandma died and <clears throat> it was kind of off topic, but just because I'm trying to drive this home here, things first responders deal with. Now, this hits home because this is my grandma, of course, but she died, okay, uh, on Christmas Day. It was, uh, I think it was, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Christmas Day. Uh, she went to go visit uh, some more of my family, and they lived in Stigler, uh, Oklahoma, um, and she was visiting them for Christmas. You know, she lived in a nursing home. She lived in a nursing home for a couple years, and she went to visit, and she went to sleep, you know, one night, and she was up, you know, five o'clock Christmas morning, you know, just talking to someone, talking about different things, and uh, I guess went back to bed, and a couple hours later, nine o'clock, uh, the kids were getting anxious, of course, because it's Christmas morning, you know, they're wanting to open their presents. She, uh, they went to go wake her up, and she wouldn't wake up, so they called an ambulance, and uh, as the EMTs and whoever else responded uh, came to pick her up, um, my, uh, I guess she would be, well, she's related to me, All that, that's all I know, but, um, cause I don't see, you know, that side of my family very often, they live far away. The thing, she, she, Harmony was saying, that's her name, she's a little girl, and she's like three years old, is, you know, hey, uh, why isn't grandma getting up? You know, when's grandma gonna get up so we can open these presents? You know, as the EMTs are, are putting her on the stretcher, taking her to the ambulance, and that just, that just, um, it made me realize, you know, hey, First responders, they deal with so much stuff, you know, that imagine being an EMT and hearing this little girl saying, hey, when's grandma going to get up? Uh, you know, when's grandma going to get up? You know, looking forward to spending Christmas with her and everything. And um, just to hear that and, and the little girl's not understanding that, you know, her grandma isn't going to get up. Her grandma is not alive anymore. You know, she's, um, I mean, not here anymore. Uh, and that's something that first responders deal with. Now back to the subject of that, you know, um, if it were me in that situation, um, checking out the kids, you know, as an EMT, they probably checked out the kids and looked at, you know, checked their vitals and all that kind of stuff. You have to stay calm in those situations. The first responders, they have to stay calm in all those situations. They have to, you know, they have to stay calm whether they're scared for their patient or whether they're heartbroken because of the situation, you know, you have to stay calm and it, it would just be so hard to, to do that. Um, so being a first responder, I know is not for everyone. Uh, and I can't really say much cause I'm not a first responder yet, but it's really hard. And, and for those people who think dispatch is, is easy and everything, they say, Oh, you know, they're just sitting behind a desk taking calls. It's really not easy. Uh, and to give you an example, think about the Columbine shooting, the dispatcher that took that call, you could hear, uh, Dylan Klebold and Aaron, Eric Harris, killing people in the background, shooting their guns off and saying terrible things to people before they before they take their life. And that dispatcher just has to stay on the phone and listen, you know, that that would be so hard. I mean, that would be just as hard as the police and EMS and fire that responded to the scene and had to care for the patients uh, on the scene. It would just be so hard. Uh, to do things like that, but especially sitting behind a desk and not being able to, you know, do anything but stay on the phone with them. And I know that dispatchers, they do help uh, with situations like that. They do save lives. They give directions on things to do in certain situations. And so, like I said, di dispatching, like I said, I'm not a dispatcher yet, but that it on its own is uh, really, really hard, I can imagine. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes, you know, I had a friend who, uh, was talking about dispatching because I told him, you know, I was interested in doing that while I'm going to EMT school here in a couple months. And he said that uh, he literally was on the phone with a guy who was thinking about committing suicide and he was trying to talk him out of it, you know, and then all of a sudden he just hears a gunshot go off and there's silence. And he said that silence is not like a silence that you'll hear um, just, you know, everyone nowadays says awkward silence. That, that would not be awkward silence. That would just be, he said, you know, that was a silence that uh, 
is like no other silence you'll ever understand. You know what I'm saying? Like you'd have to go through it to understand what it what it was like, and um, it stuck with him, and he quit after that. You know, some people you have to have, I guess, thick skin to do the, the kind of stuff. Is what I'm gathering. Uh, so I'm prepared for what I'm getting myself into, and. Those of you who are thinking about being first responders, EMTs, firefighters, police officers, all that stuff, you have to know what you're getting yourself into. Um, I've looked, I've researched a lot of things, and I know what I'm getting myself into. And another thing is you got to realize, you know, there's going to be tragedies that happen. There's going to be bad times. You're going to see the worst side of people, but you got to stick through because the people, you know, the, the lives that you will save, the people that you will help, that would be what would keep me going like i said i'm not there yet but i know the things that go on and i'm trying to mentally prepare myself uh, for when things like that do happen and because they do a lot of bad things happen here in the world and it's just life unfortunately but um thank god we do have our heroes our first responders uh to um be there and help those situations and respond to those situations um but it does i mean it really does and i was just wanting to you know tell you guys about that and and give you my um support to all the first responders in my opinion uh on all the first responders i am a supporter of first responders not trying to get anyone down or anything like that but i i'm just wanting to you know let you guys know what first responders actually do what they actually go through um and so that way you know some of you guys who think oh well you know don't really think much of first responders you know maybe this will help you realize what they actually go through what they actually do and how much they actually help people um, I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you in the next one